so a couple weeks ago I did a video short here on YouTube sharing this hive and all the condensation or the frost up underneath the inner cover and a lot of people questioned why I don't insulate or why I haven't taken time to insulate the inner cover and the reason is is you get a bunch of colonies and uh, sure that probably is the best thing but the bees have no problem living with condensation as long as it collects in the right place and as long as when that condensation becomes just moisture and begins to drip it runs to the front of the hive and doesn't just drip down the center of the hive right on the bees so if you have your colony slightly tilted forward this direction the moisture will run down the inner cover and run right down this front wall and then drain out the front of the colony so just simple little tricks like that and you can avoid going and buying big sheets of insulation although i do agree it would make a big benefit for this colony so it's friday february 9th we're sitting at 63 degrees it's been warm all week long it's been wonderful i call this fall spring let's get in here a little closer to the girls look at them look how good they're doing so for the last few years i've noticed we've had these warm spells in february and i'm here in central ohio it's kind of weird really should be cold this should be a really 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 cold month but that's not been the case and you know a lot of us like to see our bees out flying but to be honest it's really harder on them look there was some pollen of some sort going in there on that bee's legs do you see that let's rewind that and look at it again in slow motion <laughs> Wow, it actually did look like pollen and not some kind of feed. But anyway, when the bees are out moving like this, they consume more food. And when there's not a nectar flow, and there's only so much food in the hives, it's important that we check the food reserves. And uh, I myself use the Hive Alive fondant patties. People use sugar cakes, they make their own fondant patties. Look at that bee, covered in pollen. Um, I noticed a couple weeks ago the local sugar shack um, opened up. He's now cooking down uh, maple sap and making uh, maple syrup, which is pretty exciting. I love that stuff. A few years ago, I took a tour of his place and I walked through the building there and uh, he's got an awesome little setup. I actually made a video on it and if you haven't seen that, I'll link that up in the corner if you want to check that out. Maybe I'll even link it at the end of this video too. Look at that bee. She is just absolutely covered with something. So, knowing that the sugar shack is open and uh, something is blooming, it ain't gonna be long, if that isn't a maple tree, that the maples are gonna be blooming and pollen's gonna be coming into our colonies. And that pollen is gonna be used to start raising brood, baby bees. And the more pollen that comes in, the more baby bees they're gonna raise. And it's real easy, as a new beekeeper, to think, well, I need to throw on a pollen patty. Well, I don't suggest that, and here is why. If you throw on a pollen patty in that colony, they are gonna go brood crazy, and they're just gonna raise baby bees everywhere. What's gonna happen um, in reality is it's gonna get cold again. Second winter is about to hit us here in Ohio next week. And when it gets cold, bees will not leave brood. And so for that reason, you got a thin layer of bees spread out over a whole bunch of brood frames trying to keep the babies warm so they don't die. And what happens? The bees end up dying because they're not able to come back together, cluster, keep each other warm, and eat. So, what I suggest this time of year, if you want to desperately feed pollen, is offer it outside of the colony. Get you some uh, dry pollen powder or something. Get you a, a pollen feeder hanging out away from the colony on nice warm days when they're able to get out and about then they can go collect some from the pollen feeder but as far as sticking it in the colony every day it's warm whether it's raining or not they're going to be working that pollen patty and they're just going to go brood crazy so um, take my advice as a new beekeeper 
not to feed pollen patties inside the colony any sooner than what you should. Now, I understand there is little tricks you can use um, and with more experience to feed pollen patties, but I, I'm just saying for the new beekeepers, um, I wouldn't highly recommend it. So, the bees are all out flying. Um, I got some bees down there on that nuke. I did lose some up in my other bee yard. I don't really understand that. Uh, I think there's uh, a total of, I think seven hives, maybe eight, and I lost five of them. So, I don't know. I don't know if it's something to do with the location, maybe the more moisture there, I don't know. I need to break the boxes down and look at it a little bit closer, but uh, just made quick inspections as I was throwing on some fondant patties and I got to them and I noticed, you know, there's no bees flying out. And then I got in there and looking, looking around and a few bees were alive, but they were trying to rob the colony. So um, I ended up closing up the entrances and at a later date, um, I'll go back and break them down and see what's going on. And I don't want to hesitate too long because if you leave dead bees inside of a colony, what will happen is it'll start to stink. So if you can pull out those frames, make sure it's a nice warm day now. Don't go dumping bees before it gets into the 60s because I've seen people dump them out and uh, they're not dead. They were just in torpor or in a form of hibernation and they look lifeless. So don't do it till it's a warm day, but go out there and sweep them dead bees off the frames and that way they can get some air to them and breathe. So anyway, folks, I hope you took uh, advantage of this warm weather and went out and fed your bees while it was warm because it's very important we keep uh, the food reserves on top of the colony topped off the best we can. And these warmer days are the best time to do that. Now, um, in that short video I was talking about here at the beginning of this one, some people questioned me about opening the colony when it was cold. And my response always is to that, um, so are you thinking it's super cold, I'm better off to let them run out of food or what? Because in my mind, uh, I'm thinking you're best off regardless of temperature to get in there and make sure they have some food. And um, that's very important. Of course, you want to be as quick as you can when it's cold. Today, I don't have to be as quick. I'm able to open the colony up and let the bees fly around and land on me. And it's pretty relaxing, actually. Miss the girls after the few months of winter we've had so far. I guess I should say after first winter. Um, anyway, um, quick update on my book. It's in formatting and I uh, should have some samples here real soon and hopefully I'll be able to share them samples with you to kind of give, a, give you a feel for what the book's going to look like. So um, stay tuned for that and uh, hey if you enjoyed this video slam that thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed please take time to do so. Thanks for watching folks and we'll see you on the next one.